heat from the compressed air in the intercooler, from the organic medium of the high temperature loop, and from the engine coolant in the evaporator too. I will start with the description of the high temperature loop. In this loop, the organic medium enters pump one, where it reaches the high pressure of the cycle. Then it enters the evaporator one, where it receives heat from the exhaust gases of the main diesel engines. Then it is expanded in the expander one, producing electricity. Afterwards, it is condensated in the preheater, preheating the organic medium of the low temperature side. Let's talk about the low temperature cycle. In this cycle, the organic medium enters the pump two, where it reaches the high temperature, the high pressure, sorry, of this cycle. Then it enters the intercooler, where it receives heat from the compressed intake air of the main diesel engines. Then it enters the preheater, where it receives heat from the organic medium, the high temperature cycle. Subsequently, it enters the evaporator two, where it harvests heat from the engine coolant of the main diesel engines. Then it is expanded, expanded to producing electricity. And finally, it is condensated in the condenser by seawater. The thermodynamic processes of both loops are demonstrated in this slide. Four different organic mediums have been examined in different combinations for both loops. Their main properties can be seen in the table of this slide. After the energy analysis, a heat process analysis is carried out in order to calculate the necessary heat exchanger area of the system. This calculation is based on the logarithmic mean temperature difference method. In this method, in the relation one of the slide, the logarithmic mean temperature difference is calculated by the energy analysis. Then in this relation, the overall heat transfer coefficient is calculated by the relation two, in which the convective heat transfer coefficient is calculated by the relation three. In this relation, the dimensionless neutral number is given by the relation four. After the evaluation of the overall heat transfer coefficient, we can calculate the required heat transfer area and we can define the geometrical characteristics of the heat exchanger of the system. After the heat transfer analysis, an economic analysis takes place in the engineering software ES, so as to calculate the total investment cost for this system. The economic analysis is based on the module cost technique, which is a technique that is applied on chemical industry. This technique calculates the bare module cost of the components of the installation, and then using the safety index, the cost of the investment. I will start the cost calculation of the heat exchangers. For this calculation, the constants are depicted in the right part of the slide. Subsequently, we calculate the cost of the pumps and the cost of the expanders with their constants in the right part of the slide. Then, summing the previous costs, we can calculate the total cost of the investment. After the economic analysis, a parametric investigation takes place in order to examine the impact of various parameters with different combinations of organic fluids in the thermal efficiency and the generated power of the system. The parameters that have been examined are for the high temperature loop, each evaporation pressure, each superheating degree, and each condensation temperature. For the low temperature loop, each evaporation and condensation temperature, and the exhaust gas temperature after the evaporator of the high temperature loop. Let's proceed in the results from this investigation. 
As we increase the evaporation pressure of the high temperature loop, we notice an increase in both the generated power and the thermal efficiency of the system. With the increase of the superheating degree of the high temperature loop, you can see that the generated power and the thermal efficiency of the system are kept stable. With the increase of the condensation temperature of the high temperature loop, we notice a decrease in both generated power and thermal efficiency of the system. With the increase of the evaporation temperature of the low temperature loop, we can notice an increase in generated power and thermal efficiency. With the increase of the condensation temperature of the low temperature loop, both the generated power and thermal efficiency are decreased. And finally, with the decrease of the just gas temperature after the, the high temperature loop, we can notice an increase in both generated power and thermal efficiency of the system. From the conducted parameter investigation, it is concluded that the UR loop RC system must have the following parameters. The optimum combination of organic mediums is the R245FA for both loops. The optimum evaporation pressure of the high temperature loop is 3 MPa. The optimum superheating degree of the high temperature loop is 20 Celsius grad. The optimum condensation temperature of the high temperature loop is 76.85 Celsius grad. The optimum evaporation temperature of the low temperature loop is 70 Celsius grad. The optimum condensation temperature of the low temperature loop is 35 Celsius grads. And finally, the exhaust gas temperature after the high temperature loop takes its optimum value at 150 Celsius grads. In the next slides, we will see the dimensioning results of the heat exchangers from the software EES. I will start with the dimensions of the evaporator one of the high temperature loop and the intercooler of the low temperature loop. In this table, you can see many details about their dimensions. In this slide, you can see the dimensions of the preheater and the evaporator two of the low temperature loop. And finally, you can see the dimensions of the condenser of the low temperature loop. These are the results from the economic analysis. In the, in the table, they are demonstrated the cost of each component of the installation. As you can see, the total investment cost is 1,271,000 euros. Emission analysis of the combined system cabled to the fast patrol boat is carried out in order to define its capabilities in fuel cost saving and gaseous emission reduction. The standard fuel for this analysis is the NATO F76, which produces 3.2 kilograms of carbon dioxide and 0.01 kilograms of sulfur dioxide per kilogram of fuel. This fuel costs 1.05 euros per liter. The Total annual assessed hours of the operation of the system from capital to the fast patrol boat are 2,500. Their distribution is the following in this table. 200 hours in 21% of the maximum continuous rating, 500 hours in the 30% of the maximum continuous rating, and 500 hours in the 96% of the maximum continuous rating. As you can see, the annual fuel cost saving is 141,000 euros. The annual carbon dioxide emission saving is 511 tons. And the annual sulfur dioxide emission saving is 1.6 tons. Let's talk about the payback period of this investment. This calculation is based on the previous mission analysis and in the assumption 
that the annual maintenance cost of this system is the 1.65% of the total investment cost. As you can see, the payback period of this system is eight years. In the eighth year, the, this system provides 86,000 euros profit. To conclude, the combination of a four-stroke high-speed diesel engine with a dual loop ORC system can result in improvement of the overall thermal efficiency. The required heat exchangers do not have high space requirements. The overall weight of the heat exchangers does not, do not highly affect the total displacement of the boat. The use of the proposed dual loop ORC system results in significant fuel and operational cost savings and in serious reductions of carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide emissions, which improve the fast patrol boat environmental footprint. The payback period of the proposed waste heat recovery system is less than eight years, which makes this investment economically feasible with payback period highly dependent from the fuel cost. At this point, my presentation comes to its end. I would like to thank you for your attention and I'm available for questions. We thank you. <laughs> Any questions, please? It was very technical uh, presentation. I can understand that uh, we remember the old days in the academy. But I would like to say that I was astonished by the exhaust temperature of the gases, 150 degrees. I was expecting something higher. Uh, really, I was astonished that it can be so low, 150 degrees, final exhaust uh, temperature. Yes, because in low temperatures, the, the sulfur becomes liquid, so we have problems with corrosion in the heat exchangers. So we have set uh, a minimum value for the just customers. I see. And the operational profiles that you got are yes. coming from real data of the operational department or just simulations that you run in the company? It's based on data that we took from naval officers, but uh, uh, we tried to, to make it uh, to these fast patrol boats have many differences in, in speed. Uh, changes very fast speed. So uh, we made a model that uh, is based on this, this system to make it more efficient. The, but this, I'm trying to say that, you know, uh, you say 20% of the power for 200 hours. This means it's the hard for me as a deck officer. I understand that you are assessing 10 hours in the harbor, or you're assessing yes. 20 hours of maximum speed, and then three hours of economical speed, and then again back to the harbor. So uh, do we have similar profiles from real data, how a fast patrol boat is used by the Navy? And you are in uh -huh. this little model. So you can see that the, the savings in money are most close to the reality. Thank you. We had data for a month of operation of these boats which were uh, uh, 670 hours. But the distribution in these ratings of the engines uh, uh, were made by us, by ourselves, because we didn't have this data, but we tried to, to share it uh, in various uh, ratings in, er in order to make it more realistic. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. I want to show the, the high comment though is that uh, in the work he did, work, he didn't stop at the technical and scientific calculations, but he proceeded in the cost analysis and, uh, of the uh, operation of such a system, which is the approach in every engineering project should be. I'm very proud of him. I'm very proud of him. Uh, so. I would like now to ask uh, the Dean of the Canadian Naval Academy to come to the stage, Professor uh, Nikos Melanidis. He's a mechanical engineer, University of Patras in uh, 1987. 
He has a PhD in materials from uh, Queen Mary College in 1991. He has uh, 35 years professional experience uh, extensive in the fields of mechanical engineering, forensic engineering, and failure analysis. Composite materials technology transfer, research and technology and innovation project management. Since uh, 1999, he holds a chair in the Mechanics and Material Division of the Hellenic Naval Academy. In the last 10 years, he has been the principal investigator in more than 40 failure analysis projects from the Hellenic Navy and the marine industry. He has published over 60 papers on the material and technology transfer, and he has been the principal investigator and project coordinator for 10 research and development projects. He currently serves as the dean of the Hellenic Naval Academy. Mr. Dean, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to present you today an idea which stemmed from a frequent problem that several Navy officers have transferred to me, asked me over the last few years. It concerns the knowledge acquired from frequent and various cases of materials failure and uh, the idea of developing it into a system and a service for the Navy, Navy and not only. It is well understood by now that uh, failure analysis and uh, failure of materials, components and systems is not just a scientific topic, but a, an issue of knowledge management. And let me go straight to the example that made us start working on this project. It was back in 2015, where a two-shaft fastboat presented a beautiful fracture of one of the shafts shown on the left top of this picture. As a part of the process, the, our laboratory was asked to contribute in failure analysis. Going quickly to the result of this failure analysis, one can see a welded zone with two layers of welding, which actually, the first one, full of bubbles, this is the fracture surface, and this is the point where the failure initiated, was initiated. The case study was completed, delivered to the uh, people who asked us to give some additional information, and case was closed. Two years later, the second shaft of the same boat presented a similar failure model, which I'm not going to go into details. A macroscopic picture shows quite significantly the source of failure, the initiation of failure. But what I'm going to actually discuss with you or present you here is some administrative facts. Nobody from the ship staff who was present was any more serving on the boat two years later. So there was a gap, a disruption of knowledge and continuous weakness in the know-how. And this is quite a frequent case for many failures, all materials and components failed at some point. It's a frequent pattern in places, in businesses that have uh, career models and allocation systems where the staff of the boat is not constantly the same. Of course, we all know that failure consequences of a component, a structure, a detour, a system in any technology dependent sector are assessed in terms of economy, personnel safety, environment, and operations capability. And quite frequently, we hear about unforeseen failures, which practically means that we have not actually controlled where the failure parameters, either due to poor design, 
manufacturing faults, installation errors, maintenance negligence, process weaknesses. Sometimes we have a real portion here. We have meteorological or geological phenomena, terrorism uh, actions, and similar. Now we have these project problems to address here. There is a disruption in the flow of knowledge and knowledge gap, which is due to either administrative facts, raw geographic distributions of platforms and units as in a, in a, in a fleet, frequent transfer and reallocation of staff due to the career model, and early retirement schemes due to the character of some professions. And there are some technical facts that we have information that have to be incorporated from various sources, data, images, reports, opinions, views, or where the failure was due to. Also, there is an issue of recording and indexing of an incident, especially in old units that do not have modern facilities, record books, or, and many times these are scribbles from people on board on the local computer. This gave us the idea of a project which is funded by the National Foundation for Research and Innovation, where we call it NAVMAT, Naval Materials Failure Model uh, Platform. NAVMAT attempts an interdisciplinary approach by integrating materials engineering and informatics under the management of knowledge. It's a knowledge-based system, a platform, a software, dedicated to effective recording, efficient indexing, easy and accurate retrieval of information concerning failure of marine materials for the moment, component systems in naval environments. It's initiated by an incident. An incident of failure is the heart, the beginning of business flow of uh, the system. Is based on materials failure ontology, and this is a term which I just was acquainted by working together with people with AI, artificial intelligence background, using artificial intelligence algorithms and some modern approaches in data handling. It aims to optimize naval materials failure management and to support the decision making in supplies, in maintenance, and repair operations to facilitate also vocational training of the people involved in this business. This is a platform concept where we have the ontology and the lexical and, lexical and semantic resources, a repository of information, the failure reports drafted by the experts, the assessment and the decision area, which is, has to be taken by the user. I will just try to present you the concepts which are involved in our analysis. The heart of the operation is the machine element that has failed, the component that has failed. This component is linked, is of course made of an engineering material, which is fabricated with a specific method. This machine element operates under a specific loading type and presents a failure which can be classified at various levels. The first level is something which the user, not the expert, can easily identify corrosion or fracture. It can be further classified from the point of view of a, a better, of an expert, of someone who knows what he's talking about. And it can go further to mechanism level, third level of information, the taxonomy of the system, which follows this taxonomy takes place for every one of these concepts. Of course, there are also, it contains synonyms of these terms, which are used by the technical people and also the scientific world, linking its term with the failure type, the engineering material, the fabrication method, the cause of failure, eventually. So 
some how now the AI contributes to this uh, system. It allows the system to take advantage of expert know-how. The concepts, I presented you seven of them, eight in the previous week, the, the blocks, the hexagons, the hexagons, uh, exit and hexagons, components, materials, measurements, which systems where the component belongs. There are different ways to express the same concept. Yield can be found as plastic, the definition. Can be found as an agricultural tool, as plastic models. They are all interlinked. Relations between concepts. For example, pitting is a different level, lower level information, more advanced of corrosion by the failure. It suggests identifying tags for an input case document to facilitate indexing and helps identify the most appropriate documents for a given query. Typical workflow. Something happened and I want to report it and contribute to the solution of such a problem. Or another question for users. Something has happened and I want to see what other others did in similar cases. And help decision making to the problem and uh, decision making to the suppliers or avoidance of the problem. Some features of this platform, which is in the final semester of the year. As a multi-legal character for the moment, all the ontology and the semantic resources are parallel and developed in English and Greek. Therefore, when someone calls it a corrosion, you can find also all documents using the Greek term, which is the address. So it's expandable because it can also incorporate the ontology and the analysis, the taxonomy of each, of each concept to other languages as well. It can be expanded to other systems, not only ship systems, but land systems, on air systems. It's adaptive, allowing various levels of access contributors, the users, the experts have developed to give their opinions on each failure type, and it's user validated. That is why from this stage on, we have incorporated on the team a group of 25 officers from the design of the system. I just remind you the opening address of Mr. Stewart that it's not only enough for scientists and engineers to develop systems, but before they develop the systems, they have to incorporate the view of the users in developing the system. And it's planned to operate with a group of people that we build from now their capabilities through thesis, final year thesis, thesis and the postgraduate courses we operate. So we are already building a team of young officers that are going to be helping developing, operating the system in the forthcoming years. And of course, the first thing we did is to have the support of the Navy and higher and highest level to be used because every system can provide information only if it has proper feeding of data. We are, of course, not rediscovering the wheel. We are using an ontology management system of web protege developed by Stanford University, which we have incorporated, it's an open source system, which we have incorporated in our database, in our system, and we are building on that all the time. This system allows machine learning because according to the number of queries, we can improve the ontology and target more, more accurately the queries of the users of the interested parties. We have a website and attached to it the application of the platform, which allows, has all these systems of modern interfaces 
of uh, web-based applications incorporate, create, read, update, delete, queries, suggestions, storage, efficient search, indications of solutions, indications of what others that have reported similar cases have eventually ended up in judgment and opinions, and what we expect to deliver in six, about six months' time, it's a product, knowledge management system, a service, which is going to strengthen the technical capability and decision-making of the users, a forum in the group of users, which we will contribute to, will contribute to research, innovation, integration, and networking be, between people that are users in different platforms, in different units, on the fleet, for example, as well as in reorganizing the processes and introduce, introducing an innovation in the organizational structure of reporting failures and managing failures. There is a precondition. First of all, sufficient data feeding. We are testing the system with our own now. First 40 uh, failure analysis reports that we have conducted the last eight to 10 years. And many more other cases which are incorporated by the test users, the group that is the, uh, that are testing the system, or cases that they maybe has not considered as worth it to investigate further, further, but anybody knows that yes, we have a broken fractured pin, fractured bolt. In that case, and it is not involved in the full study, but exists there and has to be recorded in order when the number of cases reach up to a number of thousands of them, to have some trends and understanding of repetitive patterns and focus to solutions in areas that they were distributed and not collected together before. Of course, we are building now our business plan internally, the marketing and the active dissemination of the platform, because this platform is going to be successful only if it is used and paid by, provided, paid by the users. I want to thank you for your attendance, and I also want to thank the Hellenic Foundation for Research and Innovation for its financial support. I'll be very happy to invite you to contribute to our idea, to participate in the testing of the system, to help us expand in other areas of failure, components, analysis, different areas, for example, electronics, of the NAPA project and the network. Thank you very much. Any questions, please? Please. Uh, thank you very much. That's uh, really interesting. Uh, Andrew Tapper from Badcock International. Um, could you, I, my question is kind of two parts. Really. Could you firstly expand a little bit more on the role you see industry, and in particular the original equipment manufacturers playing on this platform and this approach. And then the second one is, do you uh, envisage any commercial challenges in terms of information security or allocation of information to different parties as a result of that? Thank you. I will start straight, from straight away from the second part. Okay. This is a closed system as far as the content is related. It will be an open system as far as the structure. Okay. So, it's closed system in terms of the content, and it's dedicated to uh, to the name for the moment. Now, if there is other applications which other parties may be interested, we will be happy to demonstrate how it operates and contribute into the development into other areas by simply expanding the concepts, the ontology concepts if the rest is working satisfactorily. Definitely that it's a closed system, only participants who are authorized and invited to participate can see the content, and it's up to the key user 
which is currently with the, the Greek Navy to uh, use the information, because it's their information, their project, in a, in a protected manner. That is one part. The second part, I hope I yeah, yeah, yeah. covered you. Yeah. Now, as far as your first part of the question, we are working the last few years with several uh, Greek companies, manufacturers. We are, with our small lab, we are contributing to mainly shipyards and companies that are suppliers to the Navy. This is our market. It's a small cluster for us, but we are working and asking their advice, very good advice of uh, the development of the project, as far as the concepts are covering quite well and are close to the way they approach the coding of heaviest of components they initially produce. Uh, we are also have uh, drafted some cooperation agreements last week we did with Paris, and we are preparing another one, or, uh, sorry, with another group, and uh, we are preparing the one with Paris right now. So we are actually together with the Navy, with key partners, trying to discuss further development and components of such a system where the exchange know-how within the restrictions of the cooperation agreement on how the system could be available or contribute to their own systems. So this is how we approach it. It's not an open market approach, but as far as the system is concerned and not the content, it's something that can be expanded if, if it is used, proved that it is Any other question? Professor, I have uh, just a small note. The system is not aiming only to the construction sector, I would say, but also to the service, the PMS sector, the periodic maintenance system. Uh, of course, because what is a fleet? A fleet is a service provider. It's a, it's a service provider. It's a service provider. It's a service provider. It's a service provider. The cluster which can be involved, interested in such a system are the OM manufacturers, the big platform manufacturers, shipyards, uh, everyone, the workshops that provide service uh, uh, maintenance, as well as the small technical departments on each boat, on each unit. The fleet with 50 or 100 boats has, is a distributed system like a company with 100 different located units. So we want to incorporate incorporate this knowledge which can help with know-how, supplies, to avoidance of uh, quick and early failures. Thank you very much. Any other question? So I would like again to thank our three speakers and I would like to ask you to join me in the appreciation of the efforts you did for a fantastic session here today. Thank you very much. I make the break and go to go for the bottom. Thank you. Coffee or lunch? Lunch, lunch, lunch. Super, super, lunch.